uh, and and from from an apologetic standpoint, uh, the the application of apologetics, it's, it it's great to know the maximal facts, the minimal facts of the resurrection. I, you know, I, I don't discount that even as a presuppositionalist. But um, w- one of the things that I, I think that we lose sometimes is it's not facts to know, it's facts to live. And um, w- without, yeah. without those application points, um, we're just amassing facts that were there for writing books and not, not carrying out the gospel. And, and, and that means both... Uh, in preaching of the word for justification purposes and for sanctification process. I think we see today, uh, you know, Vadi uh, Bakum uh, can, can t- uh, extol uh, uh, men to manhood, and it's the worst thing in the entire world. But Jordan Peterson does it, and it's, it's oh my goodness, he's, he's speaking so much truth, and there's such a hunger for it. I, I don't understand. And it, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, going back to the, the church leaders, there's such a, especially over the past three years when something happened at, at this time and in, in point, uh, the, the absolute failure of the, the church to be the church. And, and um, it's not something that we haven't, it's not something we haven't not seen before, but it's, uh, mm-hmm. but it's, it's, it's definitely um, encouraging that there are times and then there are periods after those times. And we just yeah. continue on calling people <clears throat> to, to faith. Yeah, it's interesting you said the Jordan Peterson thing, because that's the same exact way I felt, too, when people were like, look at this. He's telling people how to live. I'm like, I, I remember I was in China, and a friend of mine was from Estonia, and he was telling me how much he really enjoyed Jordan Peterson, everything he described. And I was like, "What? okay, tell me, please pinpoint, what is it that you like about this? He's like, we should be men. We should make our bed. We need to have discipline. And everything he was saying, I was like, I feel like the church has told me that my entire life. Like, what, <laughs> what am I missing here that is just catching so Rawly, and there he's not the only one. I think another famous example is Joe Rogan, and Joe Rogan has a bit of a vulgar mouth. I don't really listen to his show, but people, are, you know, he's really he's really telling truth. He's really getting to that, and everything he says, I'm like, I feel like that's stuff we've all been saying for a very long time. What is it that's a disconnect? I do think that one thing I'll give Jordan because I'm a bit critical of them, but one thing I'll give Jordan Peterson and Joe Rogan and these people credit for is when they say it, they have everything to lose. You know, Joe Rogan has a lot of money, Spotify could cut him loose, but he still speaks the truth despite the fact that, you know, it could cause him real problems, especially because he's not surrounded by Christians. Same with Jordan Peterson. He's a professor in Canada and all that. He has everything to lose when he speaks the truth. Again, through his prism of truth, because I don't think he's quite caught the truth. But they have everything to lose when they say it. They still have the courage to say it. And I think that is absolute I think that is what catches people. It's not that these people are speaking something so astounding the church has never said before. It's that people are looking for examples of courage in the face of persecution. And sadly, many times they're not seeing it in the church. They're seeing compromise in the church. They're seeing Christian pastors who have an entire congregation who would probably agree with them, but they're worried of offending one or two guests in the back. So they're going to, you know, water down the message. And then they look over at people like Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson who make, you know, who could easily lose a whole bunch of money, book deals or whatever, and yet they still keep hammering it. And they go, see, those guys are courageous. They have everything to lose, but they still go for it. The church pastors are scared to speak the truth. We really need to get back to a place where our pulpits are filled with people who are not scared to speak the truth that offend people today. It doesn't mean you get up there and just start hammering politics per se, but it is where we are a people of truth and we go, look, this is the truth. I'm not going to try to water this message. I'm not going to compromise. I'm going to bring you the truth, even if it's going to scald you, even if you're not going to like it as you hear it. That's what I I don't know that that's what makes Joe Rogan and Jordan Peterson, because I've really tried to figure them out for years. I think that's at least part of what makes them so famous that. And sadly, I think the church's message has just gotten so lost over the time. There's so many things that people hear somebody going, hey, be masculine. They go, wow, I've never heard that before. (laughs) But haven't you been attending church for years? Yeah. And all I heard there was, you know, my hurt and stuff like that. I think that can become a real problem, too. (laughs) 